We are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode we have a little information about SpaceX updates, then we have the usual Boca Chica developments, SM4 stacking and some SM5. It probably won't be too long of a video today, but let's have a look. Starting with politics in regards to internet constellations like Starlink and the environment. According to this Space News article, two American senators have asked the US Government Accountability Office to review an FCC policy. Apparently, in 1986, the Federal Communications Commission decided that satellite systems were covered by a categorical exemption to the National Environmental Policy Act. To summarise what the two senators wrote, while a categorical exemption may have been warranted 34 years ago, scientists are concerned about FCC activities such as permitting a business to launch 12,000 satellites claiming it should warrant an EA or EIS at a minimum. So whilst it doesn't mention SpaceX by name, they are clearly hinting at constellations like Starlink. Back in February 2018, SpaceX launched the PAS satellite and on board were two Starlink satellites. Tintin A and Tintin B were launched as smaller additional payloads to the customer payload, however it seems they've served their purpose. Jonathan McDowell recently tweeted that these two demo Starlink satellites appear to be in the process of being retired. He said that their orbital decay accelerated on March 28th, so these satellites will probably re-enter soon. In other SpaceX news, German launch services provider ExoLaunch has selected SpaceX to launch some satellites. According to this Space News article, the company has booked a rideshare with SpaceX that is scheduled for December. They said that they will be launching several microsatellites below 100 kilograms and a cluster of CubeSats. As I said, only a little information on SpaceX updates, so now we'll head over to Boca Chica where more work has been going on. Starting with the buildings, as you can see here, the high bay is currently being worked on. Last time we had a couple of engineers up there, but now we have a bunch of engineers installing what appears to be extra panels onto the roof. Other than this though, not too much else has been going on. Since my last episode, the methane tank upper bulkhead was readied in preparation for stacking. Then, as you can see here, once all was ready for integration, they lifted the rings and bulkhead and mated it with the rest of the methane tank. Here is some great footage of engineers getting in the tank using the square access ports. Recently, they started preparing the liquid oxygen tank's bottom bulkhead and by the looks of it, they are not reusing parts of SM3, but I may be wrong. Something that SpaceXers do to help one another in order to get components built correctly is they write things and make markings on the metal. Here for example, an engineer wrote on this bottom bulkhead that some joints do not get welded or tacked until the last knuckle is fit. If you remember from SM1, the vehicle popped because of a weld between the thrust puck and the bottom bulkhead. So maybe this note is related to that, just speculating but think it's really cool to see how they utilise markings to guide each other. After preparing this bulkhead, they then sleeved it with the rings and it was moved over to the high bay. I was expecting that it would soon be moved into the high bay as this section was flipped as usual so it's in the correct orientation for stacking. However, new footage shows otherwise. As you can see here, after flipping the bulkhead, they then rolled the whole section back into a tent. I'm guessing that there is more work that needs to be done to prepare it for stacking. If you remember from a couple of episodes ago with SM3, the thrust section of that vehicle was also rolled back in after being rolled out. However, it's looking like we're going to see a fully stacked SM4 prototype very soon and potentially testing very soon too. As is always the case in this rocket construction yard, there have been more rings moving around. I'm wondering whether or not these are for SM4 or SM5 as we know that only a few rings are still needed for SM4 but also work is beginning on SM5. Given that they appear to have been moved into a tent, I'm assuming that they're for SM5 and to be attached to some bulkheads. Moving on to SM5 as some of that vehicle has already been spotted. You can see here that engineers are working on three bulkheads inside of one of the onion tents. It appears that two of the three are nearing completion so I really won't be surprised if by next video these will have begun being mated with rings. I also want to show you some new pieces that have recently been moving around in the yard. Here you can see parts of a bulkhead, these might be for SM5 but I would guess maybe SM6 since we've already seen three almost fully built domes for SM5. So like we usually do, before finishing up this episode let's take a look at the latest build diagram from Raphael Adami. This is how SM4 is currently progressing and whilst not much different from the diagram in the last video a lot has still been done. Raphael has also begun the diagram for SM5 with an improved and more accurate version as you can see here. As always, a massive thanks to Mary Boca Chica Girl for her time and dedication to the cause by going out there and capturing amazing footage and to NASA Spaceflight for sharing these amazing insights. 
We are truly grateful as without you, we wouldn't be able to witness the incredible speed at which this company and rocket is progressing. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.